Monster Hunter World Iceborne is a wonderful gaming experience with a whole host of content that Capcom have supported over the past few years, but now we have access to everything the game has to offer and we can work towards the best builds possible in the game. So I'm Dark Blade with the best of the best builds for the Hunting Horn in Monster Hunter World Iceborne. Now when I say a best of the best build, I mean a build or set that is constructed from some of the rarest armor, weaponry and jewels in the game. This gives hunters some of the strongest sets possible. For this series I'll be featuring 4 builds for each of the various weapons in the game which should cater to a variety of playstyles. When it comes to the hunting horn it's a strong weapon but it has an extra layer of consideration when it comes to creating builds. Yes you have your attack rating, sharpness, affinity, ailment or element but on top of that you have to consider the melodies or songs that a horn can play when creating the various builds in the game. The best of the best builds I tend to use with this weapon are a mix of strong solo DPS and support builds. So the first build is the best of the best raw attack hunting horn build. This is a straightforward DPS build with the hunting horn that focuses on raw attack more than anything else. This means that it can be used against pretty much any monster in the game regardless of their resistances and on top of that this build also comes with a ton of quality of life and defensive options making it a very strong all round build. So for this you'll need the Bracadium Helm Beta, the Dragon Hide Beta, Dragon Claws Beta, Dragon Barbs Beta and Dragon Feet Beta. I'm also using an Earplugs Charm 5 and for my weapon I'm using the Fatalis Menace Whaler. This has a health regen augmentation and attack increase augmentation. As for the specialist tools these are down to personal preference so I've gone for Rocksteady and Temporal Mantles. So when it comes to the jewels you've got a lot to play around with. First of all I've gone for a sonorous jewel to max out the horn maestro skill. I've then gone for evasion jewels for evade window, handicraft jewels for some sharpness, challenger jewels for the agitator skill, expert jewels for critical eye, critical jewels for crit boost, protection jewels for divine blessing, attack jewels for attack boost and then a fortitude jewel for the fortify skill. As for the jewels and the mantles I've simply gone for more protection jewels. So if you've done what I've done here you'll have a build with 200 health and 200 stamina regardless of if you've taken consumables or not. You have a raw attack of 1642 with a decent chunk of purple sharpness. You have 25% base affinity which can potentially be 85 when you take into account other buffs such as weakness exploit and agitator. You have a dragon rating of 150 with high elder seal and when it comes to the various melodies the standout ones include the attack up, knockback negated and all melody effects extended. As for your defense, you have a strong defense of 1111 that is strong against water and thunder, a little bit weak to fire and ice, but unfortunately very weak to dragon. So when it comes to the skills, first of all you have attack boost at level 7. This is a skill that increases the raw attack of a build and at level 4 or above it also grants us a bonus 5% extra base affinity. You have critical eye at level 7, increasing the base affinity of this build. You have agitator at level 7. Agitator is a buff that kicks in whenever a monster becomes enraged. When this happens, you'll gain increased raw attack as well as base affinity. And as you can easily control when a monster becomes enraged in Monster Hunter World Iceborne, thanks to the whole flint shot mechanic, you should have this buff active for the majority of a hunt. Anyway, you have earplugs at level 5, negating all monster roars. You have evade window at level 5, granting us increased invincibility frames when we perform dodges and evades and such. You have critical boost at level 3, which is a skill that gives us increased damage to our hits when they crit a monster. However, this increase in damage is only applied to the raw portion of an attack, not the elemental or ailment portion. Anyway, you have Weakness Exploit at level 3, a skill that increases our affinity whenever we're attacking monster weak points. And should these weak points be tenderized through Clutch Claw attacks first, this increase to our affinity is even greater. You have Divine Blessing at level 3, which potentially can be level 5 when we're wearing our mantles. Divine Blessing is a skill that gives us a chance at taking reduced damage should we take a hit from a monster. You have Handicraft at level 3 giving us increased sharpness. You have Horn Maestro at level 2, which is a unique skill for the Hunting Horn, increasing the melody effects of our songs. You have Fortify at level 1, a useful skill when it comes to difficult hunts in Monster Hunter World Iceborne. Whenever we cart or faint and come back, we'll come back with increased raw attack as well as defense. This buff can be applied twice to a hunter during any one hunt. And then finally for the set bonus, you have the Fatalis Legend. For wearing two pieces of the armor, you have the Inheritance set bonus. This is a skill that allows us to break the level cap on certain skills found on this build. This namely applies to just the Agitator buff, but it also can be applied to Divine Blessing should you take into account Mantles. But more importantly, for wearing 4 pieces of the Fatalis armor you'll have the Transcendent set bonus. This is a skill that gives us 200 health and 200 stamina regardless of skills or food buffs, so it means we don't have to take skills like health boost. And on top of that it also grants us the true razor sharp skill, severely reducing our sharpness loss when we're attacking monsters. 
So there you have it. As you can see, it's a strong all round build. It's pretty much a jack of all trades, but in some respect, it excels at doing everything. It has strong defense, strong offense, and more. But every build out there has pros and cons. The biggest pro for this build is its damage output. Thanks to having such high raw attack, combined with its affinity based skills, it means that you can take on pretty much any monster in the game, regardless of their resistances, and do quite well. On top of that, this build also has a ton of quality of life and defensive options. From earplugs, evade window, divine blessing and more, these all add to a quality of a hunt, making it feel more easier than it is. And then finally, when it comes to the pros, is the Fatalis Legend set bonus, which grants us increases to our DPS defense and overall quality of life. But unfortunately, there are cons to this build. One of the biggest cons you may have to worry about is there will be times where sharpness can be an issue at times, especially during prolonged fights. And the other con is this is a jewel heavy build, requiring some of the rarest jewels in the game to make work. Of course though, all these builds are end game builds so they are going to feature rarer jewels. So there may be times where you have to switch up a jewel here and there to what you have available in your collection. Regardless though, if you're looking for a build to aim for, one of the strongest in the game, and you're a hunting horn player who likes to deal damage, then I would strongly recommend this build. Which brings us on to the next build, which is the best of the best elemental hunting horn build. This again is a DPS build for the hunting horn. And for effective use of this build, you need to spam the echo wave attacks for maximum damage. This build also forgoes useful songs in favor of skills that will increase your overall damage. So for this build, you'll need the Safi Crested Crown Beta, Safi Crested Chest Beta, Safi Crested Van Braces Beta, Safi Crested Belt Beta, and Safi Crested Boots Beta. I'm also using a Frost Charm 5. As always, if you are using a different weapon with a different element, you can replace the Frost Charm 5 to match whatever new element you are using. And for my weapon, I'm using the Kiar Pipe Stream. This has a health regen augmentation and elemental up augmentation. As for the specialist tools, they're down to personal preference. So I've gone for Rocksteady and Temporal Mantles. Now when it comes to the jewels you've got a fair few to play around with, so I've gone for challenger jewels for the agitator skill, vitality jewels for health boost, a frost jewel to max out the ice attack skill, as always much like the frost charm if you were using a different weapon with a different element you would replace the frost jewel to match whatever new element you were using, I've then gone for resistor jewels for blight resistance, evasion jewels for evade window, a sharp jewel for protective polish, sonorous jewels for the horn maestro skill and tenderizer jewels for weakness exploit. As for the jewels on the mantles, I've gone for Expert and Protection jewels. So if you've done what I've done here, you'll build with 150 health, 100 stamina, which will be 200 health and 150 stamina when you're on a hunt and taking all your relevant consumables. You'll have a raw attack of 1201 with a decent chunk of white sharpness. You have 50% base affinity. This can easily be 100% when you take into account the buff from Agitator as well as Weakness Exploit. In some respects, it could be considered overkill. And you'll have an ice rating of 1180. Please note that the base affinity rating and the ice rating shown here are with the true Dragon Vein Awakening buff in effect. When it comes to the useful songs, you don't really have any useful ones for this hunting horn unfortunately. The useful ones could include defense up and health recovery, but apart from that it's not the best when it comes to its melodies. And you have a decent defense of 1081 that is strong against every element, especially fire, but unfortunately slightly weak to dragon. So when it comes to the skills, first of all you have ice attack at level 6. Ice attack is a skill that increases the ice rating and thus the ice damage of a build. Of course if you were using a different weapon with a different element, you would replace ice attack to match whatever new element you were using. You have agitator at level 5, evade window at level 5, health boost at level 3. Health boost is a skill that allows our health to get to that maximum of 200. You have blight resistance at level 3. Blight resistance is a skill that negates all elemental blights against our hunter. You have critical boost level 3, weakness exploit level 3, horn at level 2, protective polish at level 1. Protective Polish is a useful skill when it comes to weapons that don't have a lot of sharpness. Basically, every time you sharpen your weapon, you'll put a protective coating over your sharpness gauge, preventing any sharpness loss for a small duration of time. Anyway, you have Critical Element Level 1. This is a skill much like Critical Boost, but applies to the elemental portion of an attack. So when our attacks crit a monster, they'll deal increased elemental damage. And then finally, when you're wearing your mantles, you'll have either Critical Eye at Level 2 or Divine Blessing at Level 2. Finally, when it comes to the set bonus, you have the Safi Jeeva Seal, True Dragon Vein Awakening. This is a buff that kicks in whenever you have your weapon drawn. With your weapon drawn, you'll gain increased base affinity as well as elemental or ailment ratings. But there is a downside to this. With each swing of your weapon, you'll drain a bit of your health, leaving a red portion of health on your health bar. 
This can be risky as it can quickly build up, giving you an increased chance of cutting should you take a hit from a monster. Nonetheless, if you're accurate with your attacks and you continuously hit a monster, then after a certain number of hits against that said monster, the true Dragon Vein Awakening will initiate a heal, healing you for the health it drained. So, as you can see, it's a strong elemental build that has the risk reward factor from the Safi Jiva armor. But even this has pros and cons. Its biggest pro is its elemental damage. Having some of the highest elemental damage in the game, so long as you're spamming the Echo Wave attacks, you're easily able to take down monsters quickly so long as you're countering them with the correct elements. The next pro is that this build also comes with quite a few quality of life skills. From Evade Window, Health Boost, Blight Resistance and more, they can all add to the quality of a hunt making it feel easier than it is. And then finally for the pros is the true Dragon Vein Awakening buff itself, granting us increased base affinity and elemental damage for simply having our weapon drawn. But unfortunately there are cons. The two major cons for this build include the true Dragon Vein Awakening health drain which you need to be aware of as it can potentially cause you to cut. And the final con is unfortunately again this build can potentially have sharpness issues especially as the Kya weapons which are normally best for this build only come with a small portion of white sharpness. But regardless, if you're a player who loves to use elemental weapons, who loves to spam the echo wave attacks, and likes to live dangerously with that Safi Jiva health drain, I'd strongly recommend this build. Okay, the songs on this build are not the best, but this build is all about the skills rather than the melodies. Of course, some of the other Kya hunting horns have better songs which can improve this build even more, so that's something to be aware of. Which brings us on to the third build, which is normally a quirky and niche build, but it's still strong, which is the best of the best support hunting horn build. This build is all about supporting a team through healing them as well as debuffing monsters. So for this build you'll need the Kulftaroth Fury Beta, the Kulftaroth's Ire Beta, Kulftaroth's Rage Beta, Dragon Barbs Beta and Kulftaroth's Wrath Beta. I'm also using a Friendship Charm 5 and for my weapon I'm using the Safi Dream Horn. This has a Health Regen Augmentation and an Attack Increase Augmentation. As for the Awakened abilities on it there are no mandatory ones really in all honesty. The main ones to aim for would be the attack melody 3, after which go for what you wish. For this build, I've gone for a combination of attack increases, affinity increases and status effect up increases. As for the specialist tools, they're down to personal preference, so I've gone for temporal and rocksteady mantles. So when it comes to the jaws, you've got a fair few to play around with. So I've gone for sleep jaws for the sleep attack skill, I've then gone for earplugs for the earplug skill, Fortitude for the Fortify skill, Sharp Jaw for Protective Polish, Tenderizer Jaws for Weakness Exploit, Medicine Jaws for Recovery Up, Sated Jaws for Free Meal, Expert Jaws for Critical Eye, and Vitality Jaws for the Health Boost skill. I've also gone for some Expert Jaws on the Mantles. So if you've done what I've done here, you have a build with 150 health, 100 stamina, which will be 200 health and 150 stamina when you're on a hunt and taking all your relevant consumables. You have a raw attack of 1,281 with a decent chunk of white sharpness. You have 35% base affinity, which can potentially be 85 when you take into account weakness exploit. You have a sleep rating of 400 and you have access to decent songs, including attack up, health boost, defense up and wind pressure negated. As for your defense, you have a strong defense of 1105 that is extremely strong against fire and thunder, but unfortunately weak to the other elements, especially dragon. So when it comes to the skills, first of all you have earplugs at level 5, you will then have wide range at level 5. Wide range is an essential supporting skill for Monster Hunter World. Basically every time you use a consumable or item, the effects of that item will be passed on to your allies. So say you drink a potion, then having wide range at level 5 means that the full effect of that potion will be passed to your allies. Anyway, next up is Sleep Attack at level 4, increasing the sleep rating and sleep buildup of the ailment on this build, allowing us to put the monster to sleep more easily. You have Critical Eye at level 4, which can potentially be level 6. You have Health Boost at level 3, Recovery Up at level 3. Recovery Up is a skill that increases the amount at which we heal through healing techniques such as drinking health potions. You have Critical Boost at level 3, Weakness Exploit at level 3, Free Meal at level 3. Free Meal is a skill that gives us a chance at not consuming a potion or other item when we actually use it. So it means that we don't have to constantly go back to camp and restock our potions. You have Speed Eaten at level 3, which basically allows us to consume potions and items incredibly quickly. You have Fortify at level 1, Protect Polish at level 1, and then finally for the set bonuses, you have two of them, both attached to the Kulftaroth Essence. For wearing two pieces of the Kulftaroth armor, you'll have the Guts skill. This works like Feline Moxie found in the canteen. Basically, on our health bar, there'll be a little mark. And should we take a hit that would kill us, and our health be above that mark when we first took the hit, we'll remain alive with 1 HP. 
However, once this happens, this buff will be lost, but it guarantees that we stay alive. And then finally, for wearing four pieces of the armor, you'll have the free mill secret, allowing us to get the free mill skill from level one to level three, greatly increasing the chance that we don't consume a potion or item when we use it. So there you have it. This is the support build that I tend to use for the Hunting Horn. Of course you could probably make a very similar build using the Fatalis armor, but I like to put a bit of variety in these builds. And in all honesty, this provides all the essential skills you need for a strong endgame support build. But even this has pros and cons. When it comes to the pros, its biggest pro is its supporting capabilities, able to keep a team alive effectively during even the toughest of hunts. On top of that, the next pro for this build is the decent song and melody selection available to the hunting horn we're using. Thanks to having defense up, health boost and attack up, it provides us all the essential basic skills to increase the damage of not only ourselves, but our entire hunting party. And then finally for the pros is that this build is actually slightly easier to craft than some of the other best of the best builds found in this series. But unfortunately there are cons. One of the cons you need to worry about is unfortunately there will be times where sharpness can be an issue once again. And the other con is unfortunately this build's damage output is slightly less than other builds found in this video. You can of course make some changes if you so wish. You could swap out earplugs for attack boost or something else to increase your DPS. But the main focus of this build was to be able to keep our team alive whilst on the most difficult of hunts. And if you're looking for recommendations for a support hunting horn build, I strongly recommend this one. Which brings us on to the fourth and final build, which is the best of the best Guidance Lands hunting horn build. This is a build that you can use in the Guidance Lands to farm that end game area effectively and efficiently. This build also shares many similarities to the first build featured in this video. So for this, you will need the Bracadian Helm Beta, the Dragon Hide Beta, Dragon Claws Beta, Dragon Barbs Beta, and Dragon Feet Beta. I'm also using a Challenger Charm 5, and for my weapon, I'm using the Fatalis Menace Whaler. This has a Health Regen Augmentation and an Attack Increase Augmentation. As for the Specialist Tours, they're down to personal preference as always, but I've gone for Temporal and Rocksteady Mantles. So when it comes to the jewels, you've got a lot to play around with. This is going to be where the main difference between this build and the first build comes into play. Basically, I've gone for Sonorous Jewels for the Horn Maestro skill, Evasion Jewels for Evade Window, a Hard Geology Jewel for the Geologist skill, Destroyer Jewels for Part Breaker, Expert Jewels for Critical Eye, Protection Jewels for Divine Blessing, Critical Jewels for the Crit Boost skill, Attack Jewels for the Attack Boost skill, Challenger Jewels to max out Agitator, and a Fortitude Jewel to give us the Fortify skill. As for the Jewels on the Mantles, they're down to personal preference as always, but I've gone for Maintenance Jewels for the Tool Specialist skill. So, if you've done what I've done here, you'll have a build with 200 health and 200 stamina, regardless of if you've taken consumables or not. You'll have a raw attack of 1642 with a chunk of purple sharpness. You'll have 25% base affinity, which can be 85% affinity when you take into account both the buff from Agitator as well as weakness exploit. You'll have a dragon rating of 150 with high Elder Sill, and the useful melodies that stand out include the attack up, not back negated, and all melody effects extended. As for your defense, you have a strong defense of 1111, that is strong against water and thunder, slightly weak to fire and ice, but unfortunately very weak to dragon. So when it comes to the skills, first of all you'll have attack boost at level 7, you'll then have critical eye at level 7, agitator at level 7, evade window at level 5, divine blessing at level 5, critical boost at level 3, weakness exploit at level 3, part breaker at level 3, part breaker is one of the essential skills for the guiding lands, part breaker on its own makes it easier to break monster body parts. And when it comes to the guiding lands, it allows us to knock off the monster materials from the said monsters more easily as well. You also have geologists at level 3. When it comes to the Guiding Lands Geologist, you only really need it at level 1, but as the dual sockets allow, you may as well get it to level 3. Geologist is a skill that allows us to loot the monster materials that we break from them twice instead of once, at least from the high tier monsters. On top of that, it allows us to loot the bone piles and minor nodes additional times, leading to more loot. Anyway, you have Horn Maestro at level 2, Fortify at level 1, and then finally when you're wearing your mantles, you have Tool Specialist at level 2, reducing the cooldown on our specialist tools. As for the set bonus, you have the Fatalis Legend, which includes both the Inheritance buff and Transcendence bonus as well. So there you have it. As you can see, it is built very similar to the first one featured in this video, but it has all the essential skills that you need for the Guiding Lands in order to get maximum loot. But even this build has pros and cons. The biggest pro for this build is its damage output. Thanks to having such high raw attack combined with affinity based skills, it means that we can take on pretty much any monster in the game regardless of their elemental resistances and defenses. The next pro is that this build has all the essential skills that you need for the Gaiden Lands, from Part Breaker, Geologist to Fortify. These skills all help yield maximum loot from the endgame area. 
And then for the final pro is the Fatalis Legend, which is the set bonus that increases not only our defense, offense, but also our quality of life. But there are cons to this build, they're very similar to the first build featured in this video, which there will be times that unfortunately sharpness will be an issue. And the other con is, again, this is a dual heavy build requiring some of the rarest jewels in the game. But if you're looking for a build to farm the Guiding Lands effectively, efficiently, and more importantly, quite quickly, this is one I can recommend. Like I said, having such high raw attack means that you don't have to switch out this build for other builds to counter the monsters you take on in the Gaiden Lands, which also adds to the overall efficiency of this build. So there we have it, those are the best of the best builds for the Hunting Horn. Now these builds are aimed to be strong general builds, able to take on pretty much any task in Monster Hunter World Iceborne. But if you wanted to take on some of the tougher monsters such as the Latrion or Fatalis, then some adjustments may be needed here and there. These builds may be also slightly different from other meta builds found in the community, but regardless, these are the strongest builds that I personally like to use in the game, and I hope they help you out in your hunts. So until next time, I've been Darkblade, bringing you the best of the best builds for the Hunting Horn and Monster Hunter World Iceborne. Hope you enjoyed the video, thanks for watching, subscribe and like for more.